The Axis Create i3030 CNC router promises big performance in a compact frame, from carving detailed wood projects to tackling aluminum with surprising ease. I've been testing it for the past month, pushing it through a variety of materials to see just how capable this machine really is. With its 710 watt spindle, solid frame, and automatic Z-probe, the i3030 is built to deliver precision and power straight out of the box. In this video, I'll share what impressed me, what could be improved, and whether the i3030 deserves a spot in your shop. Welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Let's get started. Before we begin, this i3030 CNC router was provided for me to review by Axis Create. As with all of my reviews, they aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this CNC router for the last month. My videos do have affiliate links in the description, so if you're interested in anything you see in my videos, from CNC routers, materials, or accessories, you can use those links to help support our channel. We appreciate it. The i3030 is a medium format CNC router by Axis Create. This router is designed for carving away woods, plastics, and even performed well on a Aluminum. The star of the show is the 710 watt router. This is just under one horsepower, and it has plenty of power for anything I threw at it. Woods posed no problems. The i3030 was chewing through softer poplar without breaking a sweat, and even harder woods like oak barely put a load on it. When testing aluminum, I could hear the router's motor starting to load up when taking 3mm deep cuts at around 500mm per minute speeds, but the i3030 could sustain that load for the entire 40 minutes of this aluminum billet test. The router has an RPM range of 6000 to 30000 thousand RPM. The i3030 comes with an ER11 collet, supporting quarter inch or six millimeter diameter end mills. You can purchase additional collets to support smaller diameter tools. Axis Create includes a quarter inch two flute end mill and a V-bit with the i3030, a good pair to get started cutting and engraving. While the router itself is important to the performance of a CNC, the frame of the machine is just as important. Without a sturdy frame, the machine can flex and warp under load, which will destroy any hope of precision. I found the i3030 had a very solid frame. The X, Y, and Z axes all use dual HGH-15 linear guides. Combined with the T10 lead screws on the X and Y axes and a T8 lead screw on the Z axis, the i3030 offers high precision while being very rigid. The rest of the frame is non-magnetic, so likely aluminum, and weighs 20.5 kilograms. The i3030 has a working area of 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters by 95 millimeters. That is plenty of space to work in, and I think that it is a happy medium between having enough space to work in, and yet still compact enough to to fit in a hobbyist shop. The bed is MDF and has a number of threaded holes for work holding. Axis Create includes four clamps with the i3030. I found those clamps a little strange though. They have bolts with a T-slot end, and yet this is not a T-slot bed. However, you can unscrew those bolts and flip them around, and then they can be screwed into the bed. It does look awkward to have the T-slot sticking out of the top like that, and they might reduce the clearance between the clamps and the Z-axis, but I didn't have any clearance issues with them in my tests. For many of my wood tests, I preferred to use X-Fasten double-sided tape to secure it directly to the bed. This worked well, especially for lighter cuts. Once you start cutting through a design though, you might need to consider other work holding methods. The i3030 uses 42mm NEMA 17 stepper motors. I found those motors to be more than powerful enough to move the i3030 while cutting, and I didn't experience any loss of steps or other unusual movements in my tests. The x-axis cables are mostly neatly cable managed in the drag chain up top. The router's main power cable has its own connector at the top, and that does let the power cable touch and drag on the chain. I am a little concerned about that rubbing over time, but it's undamaged over my month of testing. The i3030 comes with a semi-automatic tool probe. Simply plug it in and place the probe on top of your material. Then move the tool over the probe and use the offline controller to start the Z-probe. This will detect the length of your tool and automatically zero the Z-axis to the top of your material. The i3030 does have a magnetic holder to store the probe at the top of the Z-axis. However, I couldn't figure out what to do with the cable, so I opted to just plug and unplug it each time I wanted to use it. The Z-probe was very convenient though and worked well with a variety of tools that I tested it with. The cable bundle plugs into the back of the main control box. The box also has two 120 volt sockets on the back, which you'd plug the router cable into. On top of the control box is a full color LCD panel, the selection dial, and an emergency stop latch. The controller is easy to use, you can manually jog the machine, home and zero the axes, start the Z-probe, and control everything you'd want using it. There are also three buttons at the top, which switches you into the manual jogging mode, a button for switching the axes you are controlling, and for adjusting the step size. It was very easy to use and made getting the machine ready to run the program quick and simple. The i3030 is a pretty noisy machine. While operating, I was getting 85 to 90 decibels from a few feet away. You'll want to make sure that you are wearing all of your PPE, including eye and ear protection when operating the i3030. The i3030 comes entirely pre-assembled. Simply remove it from the box, remove the plastic and foam used for shipping, and plug in the cables. Slide in the router and tighten it and you're ready to go. It doesn't get any easier than this. I would recommend sliding the router all the way down. 
If you want to cut all the way down to the spoil board, you'll want to get the router as close to the bed as possible, so that your tool will stick out as little as possible. I was getting Z-limit warnings before I moved the router all the way down. There was one tiny hiccup that I experienced. My i3030 had a very small amount of shipping damage. The knob on my Y-axis motor arrived bent. There wasn't any damage to the motor or the Y-axis itself, and by backing off the knob slightly on the shaft, the motor was able to move freely, so it didn't affect my testing or the operation of the i3030, but I wanted to mention it. Axis Create has a pretty extensive manual on the i3030, including a section explaining all of the machine settings. That is great to see. The i3030 can use any Gerbil compatible software to send G-code to the machine. Axis Create includes a copy of Candle on the SD card, but you can use other software like Universal G-Code Sender to send G-code to the i3030. Candle is easy to learn and gives you a live view of the G-Code it is sending, as well as a visual view of the machine in operation. You can also control the i3030 through candle, jogging it and zeroing out the axes. But the main hurdle to anyone learning to use a CNC is how to create the G-code in the first place. The machine is only as good as the toolpaths that you generate in a CAM program. For hobbyists, I highly recommend Fusion 360. It's free for personal and hobby use, and the CAM section is incredible. The tutorials are great, and the documentation of each and every setting is extensive. The option that I use most is Kirimoto. It is a free browser-based CAM, and is integrated into Onshape, my preferred computer-aided design tool. The toolpaths are much more basic than what you'd get in Fusion though, but they are still fully functional. Once you have your G-code file with the toolpaths from your CAM program of choice, you can open it up in Candle, zero your X and Y axes at the origin point you defined, and use the Z-probe to zero the Z-axis. Then you are ready to send it. So with all of the specs out of the way, let's see how well the Axis Create i3030 cuts and engraves. My first test was using the provided quarter-inch end mill to cut a series of shapes in pine. Besides some fraying at the top, which is expected with an upcut end mill, the i3030 handled the cut without issues. I was running at a very conservative 700 millimeters per minute at 3 millimeters depth of the cut. When I saw how well the i3030 handled it, I quickly bumped it up. Even harder woods like oak cut well. This same test file showed the same fraying at the top, but nothing a little sandpaper won't take care of. Switching to a quarter inch ball end mill, let's do some contour engraving. This koi fish relief turned out great. Poplar is a very soft wood, and the i3030 did a great job of carving it. The detail in the scene is more limited by the larger quarter inch tool than it is by the CNC router itself. A smaller bit would allow for more detailed engraving. I wanted to try something a bit larger. My father-in-law carved this sign many decades ago, so I 3D scanned it using my Creality Otter scanner. You can see my review of that scanner here, and made a copy on the i3030. This piece was 280 millimeters long, and took just over an hour to carve with the quarter-inch ball end mill. The router could handle going faster, but I think I was limited by a low plunging speed setting in Kirimoto. The results are great though. I love having a scale replica of this sign, and a scanner and the Axis Create i3030 made it an easy job, but the i3030 can handle more than just wood. Let's try out aluminum. My first test cuts using Kirimoto were good, but I was having issues getting Kirimoto to start each pocket from this sensor outward. It seemed to always want to alternate between working inside out, moving down, and then outside in, but that outside in meant that I was doing a full width slot around the exterior, causing a rough wall surface finish. But using Fusion 360's toolpaths were much more optimized. The 2D adaptive clearing made quick work of clearing out the aluminum. Using a quarter inch, two flute carbide end mill, and these speeds and feeds, the i3030 easily worked through this aluminum billet. I was impressed with everything in this setup, both by the i3030 being capable of cutting aluminum this cleanly, and by how well Fusion 360's speeds and feeds worked by default. Now don't get me wrong, this isn't a perfect result like you would expect on a full CNC mill. The i3030 doesn't have any cooling, no air blast or mist, so it's easy to get aluminum chip welding. And if you run your fingers across the floor of the cuts, you can feel some tool marks. While the i3030 has a pretty sturdy frame for its size, there must be some level of tool deflection. Do be careful not to punch the tool directly into aluminum though, or you could let out the magic smoke. Finally, let's talk about more complicated parts. This Raspberry Pi 3 case consists of multiple operations, with both a quarter inch and an eighth inch end mill. The i3030's Auto Z probe made it very easy to switch tools and set the Z offset between operations. The key learnings for me is to be aware of the order of operations. With my first attempt, I did a lot of roughing with the quarter inch tool first, but left the standoffs and the IO slots to the second tool. However, when it was their turn, there wasn't any support and both the standoffs and the slots broke away. The second attempt, I reordered the operations and milled the slot before doing the outer contour, and I left more wood around the standoffs which was removed afterwards. Both changes left more wood to support these cuts and it came out much better. The i3030 just disappeared into the background. It was doing exactly what I was telling it to, and I got lost in the project itself. And that's about as high praise as you can give a tool. In conclusion, I am very impressed by the Axis Create i3030 CNC router. Its 710 watt router packs a punch, and easily handles hardwoods and even aluminum without bogging down.
down. The machine is nice and compact, easily able to fit on my workbench to test, and it's built like a tank, with a very sturdy frame that's rigid enough for machining aluminum. The automatic Z probe made switching tools and setting the Z offset very easy, and the control box was easy to use. Setting up for a new cut became second nature quite quickly. There are a few things that the i3030 is missing. The lack of a dust shoe or enclosure makes operating the i3030 a very dirty experience, but aftermarket shoes are easy to find. There's also no air blast or coolant system, so cutting aluminum takes a little bit more care. But none of these are deal breakers to me, and easily able to be solved with a few upgrades. The Axis Create i3030 CNC router is on sale for $499 US dollars at the time of recording. For a CNC router with a 710 watt spindle, that is a great price. That makes the i3030 one of the lowest priced options for a router with these capabilities. And the i3030 has a larger work area than many of the other options. If you are looking for a capable CNC router with a 12 inch by 12 inch work area, I would highly recommend the Axis Create i3030. I think that it would fit right in in any small business or hobbyist shop. So thank you all for watching my review of the Axis Create i3030 CNC router. What was your favorite feature? What features do you think it's missing? Let me know in the comments below. And I have plenty of upcoming projects and reviews in the works, so be sure to subscribe to Hoffman Engineering so you don't miss out on those coming soon. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.